Yes, be wife boy. And today I am reviewing Arsenal's summer transfer window and trying to convince you lot why I believe it is Arsenal's best transfer window of all time. I dropped a video on this two months ago as soon as the transfer window finished, talking about it. And I said in that video, I've got to give it a couple months to see where everyone's playing, see how everyone's doing, see how the team's gelling. I'm going to go through it again now and use some stats from PremierLeague.com to explain how each player's fared and whether overall the transfer window was a W. L or N. Leave in the comment section down below your thoughts on Arsenal's transfer window as an Arsenal fan or as a neutral fan or as a rival fan and while you're down there please consider subscribing on my road to 700. So yeah where do we start? Let's start with Albert Sambi Lokonga. I guess we're going to order that the players got signed. Lokonga for me was a player that when we signed him I didn't know a lot about him. Of course he got recommended by Vincent Company and Lex manager and Thierry Henry. So two very reputable sources. He's a young midfielder. He seemed like a Thomas Partey, kind of like a younger version of him, someone that could mould into Thomas Partey. And he's done excellently to start the season. He's even started a few games. I don't know whether that was the plan. I think just because with Xhaka being injured, etc. But he's slotted right in. He's looked really, really comfortable. I've got his stats up on the screen with me. As you can see, his goals are not great, but that's really not his kind of position, his role. That's something he needs to grow into doing, but that's not the primary thing. His shooting accuracy is still 36%, which is not bad for a midfielder. He needs to get up there and assist. His passes though, 42.9 passes per match. He's getting on the ball a lot. He's making things happen with it. Two crosses though, we need a bit more though. He is a midfield, so that's not really where I'm looking. I'm not looking at that part of his game really, but 20 accurate long balls in 20, 10 appearances, about two a game. It's not bad. The thing that really, really excites me is his tackle success rate, 81% in the Premier League. That is very, very good. That is very good tackle success rate, especially some of the other players I'm gonna show you that we signed that are primarily defenders don't have that success rate. So it looks like he's a presence. It looks like in 50-50s, he is going to get uh, the like, the, he's going to be the one to win the ball back, which is a very, very good sign, especially for someone that's going to mould into a defensive midfielder alongside Thomas Partey. He's had an error lead into a goal. I can't exactly remember what goal that was. <laughs> but look, Lokonga, he was a young player that we signed on a, he wasn't the most amount of money at all. I think it was around 15, 17 million. And he's looking like a really decent signing. Someone that can definitely fill a job in midfield. It means we haven't missed Gwen Doozy at all, to be honest. We haven't missed Danny Ceballos at all, to be honest. I'd rather have Lokonga than Ceballos. So yeah, and not Torreira neither. So Lokonga, great signing for me. Let's move on to his partner, Nuno Tavares. Yeah, so he they got signed in like the, the same amount of time. He came, Nuno Tavares came from Benfica. That's something I had no clue about. I'm going to be real with you. I thought this would go one or two ways. He's either going to be an Andre Santos or an Alfonso Davies. And right now he's leaning towards Alfonso Davies because he is rapid. When this guy runs, he goes like a Lamborghini. He just absolutely goes off the ball, he sprints, he's explosive. You can tell he's an athlete. Like some of these footballers, they go on the ball, but they're not athletes, if you get what I mean by the way, that not explosive, they're not fast. Nuno Tavares is an athlete. He could be a sprinter in another in a lover life. His clean sheets only two. But so he's he's when he's in the team we're not as defensively sound as the other players, but that's not really what he's there for. He's he's a player he's like another left back fullback in in terms of he's like a left back fullback that plays like a winger. He attacks a lot. His tackle success rate is sixty seven percent. That is better than I thought because when we got him, Nuno Tavares, and even when I saw him in the first couple of games, I could tell that he was very raw defensively. He didn't have the, the defensive like IQ on Naus to really like put his position put his body in the right position to win the ball back so that's really surprised me he's much better than I thought I thought that would be in like around the 50s 40s so, but that, so that's really really surprised me pleasantly surprised me of course one big chance created he's getting a lot of crosses in 13 not very accurate but that will grow he's, he's going he's gonna to train at Arsenal of course but yeah you know, Tavares has been great for me really really done well definitely one of those signs where I, I expected not really a lot at all from him but it shows the best compliment I can give Nuno Tavares, the best compliment any Arsenal fan can give Nuno Tavares is we haven't missed Kieran Tierney. That is the number one compliment you can get because Tierney was the number one name on the team sheet. If we lost Tierney last season, we were finished. We had no left back to cover. We had Kolasinac, who was a liability. The fact that no one is really saying, oh, I wish Tierney was back in the team. I wish Tierney was back in the team. This is massive credit to Nuno Tavares. So well done to him. He's on very, very well to start this season. Next, let's go on to Ben White. The £50 million pound sign, the most expensive of our six signings and there was a lot of ooh, a lot of tension with this signing. Fans were against it. Some, Of course, some were for it, but also quite the vast majority of Arsenal fans were against it. Not necessarily against Ben White. It was more the price tag, spending £50 million pounds on a centre-back, an unproven centre-back, to say the least. He was at Brighton, but what this man brings to the game is more than what the stats show you. He's What he gives you 
running out from the back and dribbling with the ball is something completely different. I have not seen it from centre-back in a long time. But we are here to look at his stats. And his stats are a bit alarming. 14% tackle success rate. 14. Compare it to Albert Samuel Lokonga. Albert Samuel Lokonga, sorry, he was all around 80%. 14 for a centre-back is very alarming. I remember in the first game against Brentford, uh, Jamie Carragher highlighted his inability to win aerial duels. And... He's won 18 and lost 16, so it's just over 50%, which is not amazing for a centre-back, but you can tell this man, although he plays centre-back, he defo is like, he, that's not where his strongest skill set is, which in days gone by would be very alarming. Like, you buy a centre-back to defend, but the way football has changed now, you need centre-backs that can be on the ball, and he, the way he can dribble out from the back is expands our offensive game so much, our attacking game so much. He's that transition player because... Sometimes when it's so slow getting from defence to attack, him being in the team has made it quicker because he can just dribble right down the midfield. How often have I said, it's not about passing sometimes because defenders love when you pass the ball because they don't have to move. They just have to rotate, 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 wherever you pass the ball, left, right, left, right, they just spin and turn. When you run at someone, defenders have to react. You're moving away, you're moving in between the lines. Defenders, you have to, someone has to go and either press them or get off them or like ease off and mark someone else. Running at someone is so different to passing the ball. And the fact that he could do that from centre back instantly takes players out of the game. If you can dribble the ball from centre back, the striker's out of the game. And it becomes then you just into that phase of the pitch in the final third. So yeah, Ben White definitely brings more on the stats save, but his stats have been a little bit alarming. His 25 accurate long balls, though, is a credit to his long passing and his on the ball ability. And he has, look, he's, he's made quite a few recoveries, headed clearances, clearances in general, to be fair. And he's got Gabriel next to him, who for me is moulding into one of the best centre backs in the Premier League he's taken a massive step forward this year and I think them two could really, form a really good partnership especially with Saliba coming in next season gives us options to either go to a back three or them three can rotate and just have those three literally just rotate so two of those three play every single game basically just like Arsenal did back in the day on to the fourth signing I'm going to go with Mr Martin Erdegaard re-signed of course he was on loan and out of all the six, he's probably been the least, I'd say, he hasn't given me the most joy as the other six have. Has he been bad by any means? No. He struggles to get back in the team. I think he had a little bit of a bug and it's hindered him. And the team's playing so well right now that he's struggling to get back into the starting 11. He's still making appearances off the bench as he should. He scored a vital goal for us against Burnley. A vital, vital goal. That free kick. That's the difference between getting one point and three points at a tough away game at Burnley. Other than that, his cross accuracy 50% is not bad. He's not created any big chances yet for a cam, which is a bit, bit, it's a little bit alarming. Like you, the, the big chances come from the Emil Smith throws, the Martin Erdegaards, and he's not created any yet, which is, it's a sign he needs to, <laughs> he needs to improve that side of his game. His tackle success rate of 63% is very, very surprising. I did not think he'd have that, but yeah, that's a, that's a good sign. Definitely, definitely a good sign and he's always the first to press like some of these stats that I'm showing you on the screen of course feel free to pause and look through them they don't show the whole picture stats are at the end of the day are numerical they're going to give quantitative answers you need a mixture of qualitative and quantitative with qualitative being what you see with your eyes it's the vision test and I see Martin Odell, I see stuff that just like Ben White that doesn't show on the stats in terms of he's the first one to press the team he, when he gets the ball he like he he always he commands respects from the defenders because they know he has the ability to find that through ball. So that even when he, he doesn't, even if he doesn't play it, the fact defenders react with his ability and potential to play it means it opens up the pitch more to but possible to other players, etc. Yeah, Erdgard, Erdgard, not the best of the six, but still a very very good signing. Next, we go on to the best one, my favorite one, Aaron Ramsdale. I already gave a public apology in the previous video. Because when we first signed him, you can go back on my channel, I wasn't a massive fan. I I hadn't watched a lot of Sheffield United games, but let's be honest. This is this is this makes a point about quantitative and qualitative. When you look at the stats, when you look at the numbers, when you look at what you see on face value on the screen, it's a horrible signing. He's been relegated twice. He's got errors leading to goals. He went from he when Sheffield United signed him after replacing Dean Henderson who went back to United, they went from eighth to bottom. Every single stat told Arsenal this is a horrible signing. Yet they went with their they went deep in their gut that said this is gonna be a good signing. And boy is it paid off. Aaron Ramsdale has been the signing of the summer, in my opinion. Signing of the summer. I didn't realise we needed a new keeper until we got Aaron Ramsdale. I always just thought Leno was alright and defence was the problem. 
Now, do I think Leno is a problem still? Not necessarily. I just think Ramsdale's got that luxury of that passing. I didn't realise how important distribution was until I've seen Aaron Ramsdale play for Arsenal. Leno's distribution is very, very poor. It's below average, definitely. And that's that's, be, that's being nice to him, below average. Aaron Ramsdale's distribution is very good. Very, very good. Won the top in the league. Along, He's not as good as Edison, don't get me wrong, but he's... He's that side of the table. He's not side of the Leno's where it's poor. I've seen him literally just out of his feet, just slice it down the middle of the pitch accurately to Aubameyang. He's even got an assist from goal. That tells you all you need to know. 25 saves. I believe he's got one of the best net XGs as any goalkeeper in the Premier League, which basically means out of all expected goals from opponents, he's saved the most of them. Meaning he saved shots that should go in that are expected to be goals. You think about the one when Lucas Moore at the end of the game against Spurs hit it and he ticked it onto the crossbar. It was a show-stopping save. The same with James Madison's free kick. His position was a bit average there and the shot was in the corner, but he made it look like an outstanding save and even got people like David Seaman and Peter Schmeichel tweeting afterwards. Amrazo has been a breath of fresh air. My favourite thing about him, though, is his passion. When we concede, he's out, he's, he's command defending. He's like, why are you conceding? Why are you doing this? Press him, press that. But equally... It's not just always negative. When they do something good, he's the first to come out to him to congratulate him. I remember in the North London derby when he punched Kane's shot out and then Tommy Asu was first to react and clear it before Son could get there. He went and gave Tommy Asu a big hug for that. And yeah, just that camaraderie between the team is something that is, it takes teams further. It's a very under, underrated aspect of football. You can have the best players on the pitch, but if there's no chemistry, if there's no camaraderie of the team, you're not going anywhere in this in this world, in this sport. And the fact that he has that in abundance, he's definitely, definitely candidate for future captain of this football club. I believe he was actually an Arsenal fan growing up. And yeah, he's been absolutely amazing. Five clean sheets in eight games, six wins, not a single loss on his resume. It's a, it's a massive change from when he was at Sheffield United and Bournemouth. Of course, his stats, they're going to show the biggest picture because he's only played eight games this season. But it just shows you 10 high claims, 25 saves. He's looking like a very, very good goalkeeper, Aaron Ramsdale, and I'm so delighted that Arsenal trust their gut and signed him against what all the Arsenal fans on Twitter, me included, were saying. And finally, the last signing, the deadline day signing, Takahiro Tomiyasu from Japan. What he made, I made a video on him when we signed him. It was one of my most successful videos, 2,500 views or so, and gave me quite a few subscribers. So yeah, big up Tomiyasu for that one. But... I said at the time, he's going to be like an upgraded Callum Chambers in terms of his, his physical, his height. And he's gone there and he's gone above that. He's exceeded that expectation for me. Not a single loss with him either. Six wins in eight appearances. Four clean sheets, four goals conceded. He's got a 44% tackle success rate, which is a bit oof. Like, it's not the best. Like, <laughs> compared to, I don't know why the midfielders are better to tackle success rates than defenders. I guess because the sample size for midfielders is lower. So they've got a higher chance of if they win one tackle, their success rate is going to be much higher. But, Tommy Asu, the one weak point I'm going to go on before I talk about all his positives is he is a bit rash in terms of not flying into tackles or anything. It's when he gets the ball, sometimes he panics and just kicks it away. Sometimes like, not, he's, he's collected the ball and tackled and just gone first for instincts to get rid of it. Which I get. It's, it's, if in doubt, get it out. I understand that. I understand that mentality. But sometimes he needs to panic because when, when you receive the ball, if you're about it, in those first five seconds when you collect the ball from, from the opposition, they're not going to be set defensively. That's the time when you need to attack. So you need someone that's composed, can get on the ball and just spray a pass out. I've seen Liverpool do it so many times. They win the ball back and then it's straight to Sadio Mane or Mohamed Salah. Straight away hit them and then they can run at the defenders. And they're not set because they've been in an attacking motion. They can't get back into defensive stance quick enough and that's how they get their goals. So just that is a little thing for me. Other than that, we know his height. He got signed for that presence, that commanding aura. Tack, uh, his aerial battles, it was at 90% towards the start of the season. It's dropped off a bit, 22-1-15 lost. But overall, it's still decent. His crossing accuracy, 30%, is not bad by any means. Definitely needs a little bit of improvement. He's hit on 3 of 10 crosses. Also, bear in mind that the strikes within the books are not they're not suited to heading ability. If we do sign someone like Dusan Vlahovic, I believe his name was from Fiorentina, that will be better suited for heading ability. Of I mean, Lacazette, that's not really their strong points. But overall, very decent. 16 accurate long balls, and he's always got the stamina to run up and down the pitch. Tommy has been a great signing. So, yeah, all six signings, I'm not disappointed in a single one. If I had to rank them now in terms of my favourite to least favourite, least favourite would be Martin Odegaard just because he hasn't had the impact the others have. And then I'll go for Albert Sambi Lokonga just for the fact, don't get me wrong, that, that these five above Martin Odegaard have all been absolutely amazing. 
It's just the presence wise, he didn't give me the as much as the others. Then I'll put Nuno Tavares just for the sake that I didn't expect it coming from him whatsoever. And he's shown he's got leaps and bounds above what I expected. Then I'll go Takahiro Tomiyasu. Then I'll go Ben White. And then on top, Aaron Ramsdale, absolutely class signing. And now it comes to me rating the transfer window. I've gone through all the signings, their stats to start the season. And for me, the transfer window becomes a 9.5 out of 10. We spent the money, but we spent it wisely. We spent it on young players that are only going to improve. The reason I can't give it the full marks is because it's actually nothing to do with the signings, to do with the sales. We didn't send enough players. But what a transfer window is like for Arsenal. One of the best, definitely in my lifetime, I've seen Arsenal make. Just the, the fact that it got slandered so much by the media. You spent the most net spend, you spent the most money, and you bought no one. You haven't even improved your starting 11. Well, look, we've improved our starting 11 by a country mile. What a transfer window by Arsenal. Leave in the comment section down below, as I said below. Your, as I said before, sorry, your thoughts on Arsenal transfer window, whether you are happy about it, not happy about it. Now you've seen Arsenal play quite a few games. And after the international break, the litmus test, it's Anfield. So yeah, stay tuned for that. I'm going to be re previewing that game in a week or so time. As always, if you're new around if you enjoy Arsenal and football related content, it means the world to me if you could subscribe down below on my road to 700. I'll catch you guys in the next video.